Hi, so we've ha already had a little bit of introduction on the keynote today uh, about few things that I'm going to say, but I'm going to say more about it, of course. Uh, I'm going to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Jakub. Uh, I live in Poland, in Krakow. I uh, attend a lot to local community, uh, which is PyConic. I also attend to PyCon PL, which will be held in a month from now, so everybody is invited. We speak uh, mostly English in there. Uh, and also recently I started, uh, I started teaching children, um, I starting, started making conference to, to invite children to the world of technology. And uh, this is Koderek and Startup uh, in the two biggest cities in Poland. Uh, so that's a, a little bit about me and why I decided to make this uh, talk. A uh, few years ago I have put my first package on PyPI and I have no idea how I did it. I just ran some tutorial, copied some files, pasted it in, ran some comments, it worked. Package is still on PyPI. I don't think anyone has downloaded that yet. <laughs> uh, it's a minor package. But that was everything I knew about setup tools. And for those three years uh, from the time, I've been waiting for someone to make a good talk about Python packaging on any conference that I've attended, and no one did it. And even here, I was the only one who proposed that talk. So. Uh, Finally, I decided that, okay, I need to learn it by myself, I need to read it, consult it with people who use it every day, and make this, uh, make this talk on my own. And that's why I'm here. Uh, so don't see me as an expert. I'm not a Python package authority. I'm just someone who read a lot about it and tried to pack it all into one 45 minutes presentation. Uh, so I guess that there are people here in this room who has better knowledge on this topic than I have. Uh, when I started, when I finally decided to, that I need to touch this topic, uh, usually we have a simple architecture when we work on it. We have a project uh, which has few dependencies, and that's what I was usually doing. But uh, when I started working at YouGov a uh, year and a half ago, uh, the architecture was much more complicated, and it is not true because the dependencies are also, there are a lot of common dependencies. So having all of these systems that we use, the services, uh, with the requirements written in the requirements that take step files, uh, and having them separately and keeping them on some local, sto some uh, shared storage, that would be awful. Uh, and that is why we use uh, setup tools, and every package that we use has a well written setup.py file. And when I first saw it, I thought, whoa, that's amazing. I have no idea how it's working, but that's amazing. Uh, so now I have a better understanding on that. Uh, but the other purpose of this talk is to say a little bit about the current state of Python packaging, because it's still moving. Uh, right now, uh, there are a lot of changes going on. What I'm really glad, these are changes of existing systems. These are pro propositions how we should evolve. Uh, this is not like uh, in JavaScript where someone just adds a new library and says this is the new one that everybody should be working, but there are five people who do that simultaneously so no one knows what to use. Uh, in Python we are evolving. So there is uh, packaging Python org held by Python uh, packaging authorities uh, which shows us the current state. Uh, and this is the list of tools that we should use uh, as a Python developers. And it's divided into two parts. The first one are installation tool recommendations, which is, of course, pip and uh, virtualenv. There are more propositions uh, in this area, uh, for example, conda for, uh, for holding virtualenv on your local environment, and some more stuff. And there are packaging tools recommendations, which are setup tools that will be the main topic of this conversation. Uh, biggest wheels, which I will also cover, and Twine, which I thought some time ago that it, sh it will be surely dead uh, soon, but it is not. Uh, Twine is a tool to upload packages to PyPI, and the biggest advantage of Twine for some time, at least when I started doing that uh, presentation about a year ago, uh, was that it uses HTTPS, what also Setup Tools does from some Python version. Uh, but Twine has some more advantages and will be surely used more in the, in the future. Uh, so this is what I'm going to talk about uh, today. Uh, first of all, if you have your setup.py file, you can of course run dash dash help, which will 
briefly say you what you can do, but much more helpful uh, function is dash dash help commands, uh, which really shows you what commands you can run on your setup.py file. Uh, so just to know what the level is, who used setup.py command here? Okay, and who wrote setup.py file? Okay, a lot of you. So I will be be short on the on the next section. Uh, how does the setup.py file look like? Uh, it is just a setup function with a lot of keywords arguments. Uh, this one is downloaded from as an example PyPI project. I know that the keyword arguments here have spaces uh, near the equals, and that's not pep8, but I've noticed that yesterday, so I didn't manage to fix that. Uh, and what do we have in the setup.py file? Of course, a name of the project, which must be a unique name uh, for the PyPI. Uh, and it should be a name which says something about the project. That's oh, some artifacts. Uh, and the URL. Uh, so probably the URL of the package will be just a GitHub page where you host it. Or if you have some documentations, then that might be this. Uh, the version of the project. And this is something that I'm going to stop uh, for a while. You can write a version like that, and you can claim that you will always remember to bump the version when you upload the package, but you won't. Uh, and I also believe that I will do that the same, and I did forget once or twice. So that is where the handful package comes in. It's getting worse. Uh, and this is the setup tools SCM. Uh, and this is a cool feature that automatically bumps your version, and that's only one of the features of the tool. So, of course, your project is held in Git uh, because everyone uses Git, uh, and it reads the tag from the from the Git. Uh, you just need to add the use SCM version uh, true in your package and set that set the setup requires. Setup requires is a list of packages that will be automatically installed whenever you run any setup.py command. And I've uh, heard a sentence that it's not the best to put setup tools SCM uh, in the setup requires uh, because you might not have internet connection when you want to run setup.py functions. And that's true. But in that case, you just need to have setup tools SCM somewhere locally hosted and install that. Uh, and for the versions of the uh, of the packages, it is not fully semver. It is uh, pep 440. Uh, so if usually you just use uh, number dot number dot number, but there is also a possibility to use those beta demo and all the all the other naming conventions, and it's all written well in the peps. So this is only one feature of setup tools SCM, but there will be more. Uh, author and author email, I think that's pretty obvious. It's good to set up true data so someone might reach you, not to give any fake, uh, fake email. Uh, the description, and that's also a good practice, uh, try to keep a long description the same as a readme file. Don't try to paste it in here, because, again, you will one day forget to update that. Uh, read is, of course, some IO read function that, that will just read the readme file that is also attached to the project. That's a good convention to, to do. Uh, also, always try to uh, add a license. If you don't add any license, then no one uh, is really available to use your, uh, to use your package. Uh, so. If you don't care about license, just add some BSD or co common creative, and uh, that means that people will be available to use that. I'm not a lawyer, so I don't even know what those licenses are, but if you want to read a little bit about it and add it to your project. Uh, and the keywords. Uh, keywords and classifiers, these are things that uh, says more about the project we use. Keywords are used for better uh, better search of the project and classifiers uh, is a list of uh, list of things that group our project that well, classifies our project and this is an example of the uh, setup tools. Uh, it has some keywords set and a list of categories and these categories are just the classifiers and my personal uh, best uh, classifier that I love is private do not upload and no not everybody knows you 
won't upload your package if you have this as a classifier. So you won't accidentally upload some bad version of your package. Strange things happening. Uh, and the packages also. You can list your packages in the setup.py file, but what for if you can just write find packages? Uh, and even just internal packages equals find packages braces will work. Uh, but you can set up the source or, or modify it on the go. Uh, just good to know that it's there. Uh, and there's more. So you probably know that there is a requirements.txt file that is not a convention, but most people use uh, requirements.txt. Uh, but for the Python packaging, uh, you keep what you usually keep in the requirements.txt and the install it requires. So that is just the list of packages uh, that are dependencies of our package. Uh, they can be pinned uh, to some specific version or to the range of versions. Uh, so exactly like in the requirements.txt. And what is interesting, uh, you can still have requirements.txt and it's, uh, uh, it's, you're encouraged to do that. And you can write dot in, in a line of your your requirements.txt, and that dot will install packages from the install requires of your setup.py file. Uh, I don't have slide for that, but that's something that you can do. So often there is a, a way to keep requirements of .txt with some additional files, that, uh, additional dependencies that you want to use locally for local development, but the install requires, that is something that when someone else writes pip install name of your package, everything from the install requires will get installed on his computer. So don't add things that he won't need because let's not be rude. Don't make people download more data than they need. Uh, there are also extras. Uh, so this is an example from IPython and you can have some extras which says that if you have some extra IPython like a notebook IPython, that will install some additional dependencies for you. And you run it with the install IPython and notebook in the braces. Uh, you can also add test require, will, which will be run during the Python setup.py test. Uh, but this requires a bit of configuration. And actually, I talked to, to a guy from Python packaging authorities. He, he said that he's not encouraged to use test requires anymore and that it's much better to use extras testing or test uh, and use talks for installation of this, those packages. Uh, and that is the way that probably they will be going to, to not use test requires uh, that much anymore. Uh, and talks have some ways to configure to, to read those, those testing files. So I won't go deep into that. Uh, and the last things uh, of the setup.py file, the entry points. And that is something that I absolutely love. Uh, I didn't know that when I run virtual env, name of the, of the environment, I actually use entry points. So I guess that everybody here, at least once in his life, used uh, entry point. Uh, you can add console scripts that will just save someone from writing those uh, six additional characters, seven including space, uh, every time they, they want to run virtual and dot pi. Uh, and for your package, you can write any entry point that you want. This is just to save people time. You can write that uh, in readme uh, to summarize the most common usages of your application. Uh, and that's a really great way to, to set up your environment like more user friendly, uh, your package more user friendly. Uh, now, that was the setup.py. And there might be a setup.config. Uh, that is a separate file. Uh, it looks like it, for, for me, when I looked for that, uh, at, at that for the first time, I didn't have an idea what, it's, what are the, all those lines. Uh, but that's pretty simple. Uh, in the braces, like the global, it says when this uh, config should be added. So global means that every time. So every time you run setup.py function, uh, verbose equals once means that it will add dash dash verbose to your to your uh, action. Uh, so the second one, be this wheel. Every time you build a wheel, it will add dash dash universal. You won't see that, but this will be uh, happening. Uh, and if you equals to something different than one, 
like the easy install, every time you run uh, Python setup.py install, it will add dash dash index URL equals devpy uh, of the company. Uh, so pretty handful for the people who don't remember to, to write those functions or if you want to encourage to, to do that. You can also attach some metadata like license file or even attach it to some tools like PyTest. And the last file uh, that is required for the stuff.py is uh, manifest.in. So this is the, when you do a project, you don't always do that full in Python. You might have some uh, HTT, uh, uh, HTML or some some images that you want to, to provide or anything, any static, any assets. Uh, you keep this uh, noted in manifest.in and that means that when everybody will download this, pack, when you will build this package, this data will be in the package. When someone will download this, we'll also download the manifest in. And that is the second great thing uh, of the setup tools SC SCM. Everything not in git ignore will be added uh, invisibly to the manifest.in. Uh, so just keep your git ignore file written well and set up with SCM will care for the rest. And getting to the point where I really love using setup tools uh, uh, and I love the functionality that it provides. Uh, currently I'm working on four or five services uh, which talk to each other. And usually I develop one of them, uh, sometimes two. Uh, so I have an environment uh, that has all of these packages installed and they are running some locally, some against uh, some staging, uh, etc. When I want to write, uh, write uh, changes to some package, when I want to edit that, uh, I just run, enters the, setup dot, enters the directory of that project, run peta, uh, python setup.py develop and automatically I will start using my local files of that uh, project. When I'm done with development, I run python setup.py install and I'm using the most recent uh, package version uh, that is available. Uh, and with, it's, for me, it's like a switch uh, between developing this package, using this package as a dependency. And that's working pretty well for, for more than a year and I haven't found any disadvantages of, of that. Uh, so for me, that is like the core gain of this. Uh, but there are also other advantages. Uh, I want to say also a few words about uh, X versus wheels. Uh, X are considered deprecated, so you shouldn't use X anymore. Uh, you should use wheels. Uh, and wheels have some advantages over X that I want to cover briefly. Uh, so wheels is just a way of keeping your binary distribu distribution of the package. Uh, it has a, an official pep that uh, X doesn't have, uh, X didn't have, uh, and its naming conversion says more, says a lot about the package. So this is the name of the package, dash uh, version of the package, dash version of the wheel, so wheels can be versioned uh, inside them, dash which Python you, you want to use, if that's Python 2.7, uh, 3.5, or it can be both of them, uh, then operating system, usually known, but you can ma uh, make some Mac-only Mac packages or Linux-only, uh, ABI, and uh, the wheel name. Uh, so what are the advantages? There are no PyCI files inside. They are being generated upon installation. That's why one package, my, one wheel, uh, might be working both on Python 2.7 and 3.4. Uh, the naming conversion, of course, is uh, that's what I covered. And the uh, installation of C components doesn't require a compiler. Uh, so that's why you can use wheels uh, probably on, on any system better than you would egg, have uh, used X. And that is strongly encouraged to now uh, upload uh, binary distributions in wheels. Uh, there is a Python wheels uh, website. Uh, this not that actual, right now they have 254 packages out of 360 mostly installed ones, covered. Uh, they still didn't cover PyCrypto, SQL Alchemy, like this is, these are the most known packages I've picked up from the list. Uh, I guess that this due to some problems with this uh, C components. Uh, and that's why mostly uh, this is crypting uh, packages and database packages. 
uh, but it's moving forward. When I started doing this presentation, it was like 200 of these. Uh, now it's 254. It's going forward. Uh, now a little break. Uh, do you know what will happen when you run this com comment? Anyone knows? This is a mistake. Yeah. You, yeah. But that will work. <laughs> there is a package called requirements-dev uh, takes uh, in the PyPI. Uh, and someone mentioned that on one conference, and I think it's a lovely idea. And this is one of the issues uh, on that package. <laughs> So that was a, a short break, and now getting to the DevPy. Uh, so, as I mentioned, we use a lot of uh, packages that are connected to each other, uh, and now there comes the problem of the storage of that data. Uh, of course, we can have some cloud storage or some server storage that, where we put the data, where we put the packages uh, wheels, and we download uh, them from there and just pip install the wheel. Uh, but that would be problematic. And there comes uh, DevPy with a help. Uh, DevPy is just a proxy to the PyPy. Uh, so you can put your packages on your DevPy and they will be only visible for you, uh, for, for users of the DevPy. Uh, but if there is no package on your instance of the DevPy, that will point you to the PyPI. Uh, so you can use that nearly the same as you would have put your package on the PyPI. But you want, in, your, in the company, you want to have your packages private. Uh, you don't want to upload them to, to public because that is a company stuff, of course. Uh, and with the DevPy, uh, how do you use that? First of all, the most important file is the PyPI RC, uh, which is required for the all setup.py work. Uh, that's where you set up the upload point uh, for the for your packages, and you just set the index server to to, to your DevPy, uh, and you specify it more with the uh, with the repository URL of that DevPy, uh, and your username and password. If you don't provide a password here, it will prompt uh, prompt you to you when, whenever you try to upload or register package, and. Uh, you can register and upload packages using Python setup.py register, first, uh, first of all. You need to register your package before you upload that using uh, setup.py. I will get to Twine in a second. And then whenever your package is ready, you just as this upload. Uh, and uh, that is one the important thing. Uh, you should make sure that you have no local changes when you do that. If you have local changes, they will also get uploaded uh, and your version of the project will have some hash, hash meaning that you have changed, you have altered the current version. Uh, I have done that once or twice, and then you need to download a DevPy tool to remove that package from DevPy. That's problematic. So that's the point where you need to just remember to usually git stash all your changes before you upload to your package. But you can also do that with Twine. Uh, first of all, you still use setup.py to create your distribution, like as this or bdist this will. As this stands for source distribution, be this binary distribution. And then you just upload, or if twine upload this uh, and whatever package you want. Uh, and that's just this. That's just that. And you can have even better ways to set, set it up. Uh, that is the way, the, the thing that I hate that you need to have your password either in that file or or write it every time you use that. But with Twine, you can set the environment variable. So if you have some key pass, keychain, or any uh, sorry uh, any tool that uh, stores your passwords on your PC, uh, then you can just set it up to set this as an environment variable and don't care about your password uh, anyway. That's not still probably prompting and writing your password manually will be more secure, uh, but that's for sure more secure than keeping your password plain text in a PyPI IRC. Uh, now for the testing of the packages. Uh, so there are a few things that uh, we might want to remember about. Uh, of course, whenever we want to upload a package, we test it, and everybody does that. Uh, so there are a few steps that we can take. Uh, first one is just generate your uh, distribution file 
and install that. And that's, uh, I didn't even realize before making this presentation that you can pip install targz uh, with the package. But you can do that. Uh, and you can also pip install just the wheel. So you can prepare, you can build your wheel, move it to somewhere else, prepare pure virtual env, and try installing your wheel. That should work. Uh, that's the first step, so before you go public, make sure that your package is packed well. The second step that you can uh, do, uh, and that's also not uh, very commonly new, known, uh, is that you can put uh, test PyPy in your uh, PyPI RC. So you can upload your packages to test PyPy uh, instance, uh, which is not sharing its resources with a uh, production PyPy. Uh, so you set up just like earlier on with a devpy, the test uh, index for your PyPI RC. And that is something that there will be a demo later on. Uh, I finished preparing that uh, yesterday at 2 a.m. Uh, so that might not be perfect. Uh, but uh, I've learned uh, a bit uh, when doing that. So test PyPy is considered deprecated. Uh, now we're moving to PyPy.org. And there is test.PyPy.org. Uh, and when you want to upload to test.pypy.org, you upload to the slash legacy. And that's still in a bit, well, it's evolving right now uh, because I will be covering pypy.org later on. Uh, and I found some drawbacks of, uh, of moving to, to that, uh, but that will be held during the demo. Uh, but we should slowly use more pypy.org than pypypython.org. And whenever you're done with the installation of your package, you just pip install uh, dash i, uh, which goes for the index, uh, URL of your index, so of your test PyPy instance, and your package name, and that should install the package for you. Uh, so that is like the, if that works, then production PyPy will work for you too. So we have the package tested, and that's the last thing uh, that I have next uh, incoming. Pep20, last line. Namespaces are a great idea. You can have namespaces in your packages. Uh, so let's consider that we have a library for formatting sound, uh, formatting and, uh, and uh, editing sounds. Uh, this library might be huge because sound is a huge idea, so we might want to divide it into areas like formats, effects, and filters. Every uh, directory like formats, effects, and filters might be a separate package that you upload to sounds.formats. And they can be separate. Uh, uh, they can be uh, maintained separately, and you can install them normally at just import .sound effects. Uh, and it works. One thing that you should not mix uh, is you should never install namespace packages with easy install because that's horrible. And actually, you should never use as install uh, easy install at all. And these are just some uh, advantages of pip. Uh, and the biggest advantage, uh, which I guess, is just that easy install is is not an easy way, easy way to install <laughs> stuff. Pip is a, a way more easy easier one, and it has the pip install means error requirements and pip freeze, which are uh, great great advantages. Uh, so what's next? Uh, there is a roadmap on Python packaging authorities, authorities, and it's pretty long. You can read that if you want. Uh, so they have a lot of actions uh, on, the road, uh, on the horizon. Uh, there is a, an idea to keep the requirements in the pip file, uh, which will be written in the tom, uh, but that, that is probably uh, future. And of course, the PyPI. So we are used to, to, to going to pypypython.org. But the PyPI, which will no longer be a cheese shop, but that will be a warehouse, it's on. You can use that uh, right now. You can upload packages with Twine, and Twine is a recommended uh, way to upload packages to that. Uh, and it's alive. Uh, so I think that's the biggest change that is happening right now, uh, like literally right now. Uh, so it should work. Uh, let's see. So. I don't have much time, but I have a package which has an appy. It's a, just a Flask package, uh, and it's setup.py with some version, uh, name, entry points, and install requires. So I can try to 
not much time, so let's just build source distribution and binary distribution. What happens now? I have the build directory, which has some stuff that is that comes from the source distribution, and this library, which uh, which is just a binary distribution of the file, and I have an info which has some more or less interesting stuff that requires, and everything that you can set up on your own in five minutes and test when you have more time than I have right now. Uh, what can we do next? Uh, then I can set that to develop. And that's fine. I can run demo. And that's working. Demo is an entry point. Uh, so right now I have this package installed in my virtual env, and the demo is an entry point which, which just starts the app run. But moving further, I want to twine upload to the test, uh, where test is the, oh, sorry, not this one. That's an old one, AeroPython show. Uh, not this one, but I want to upload wheel. Wheel, oh, pi three, yeah. I want to upload wheel. It asks me for a password, which I provide. And it says that it's uploaded. So let's check if, it's, if it is uploaded. Uh, I am on the testpypy.org, projects AeroPython show, and it's here. It says that it's me. So I guess it all worked fine. Uh, so let's see if it really worked fine. Uh, I have a clear virtual env, nothing in here, and I want to pip install AeroPython show from the testpypy.org. And something's wrong with the connection. Mm. So, okay, but the package is here, so you can see that it's here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, probably uh, I've modified my PyPIRC file a bit, but I might show that to you because I have no uh, no plain text py password in that file. So that's just the PyPRRC. Uh, I'm not sure if you download, m probably you need your password set up as the environment variable, but that's something that I won't do right now on the big screen while recording. Uh, but considering my the, the demo is working on, and that used to work earlier on, uh, I have another entry point, which just points to the localhost 5000, and shows Oh, yeah, so I thought the internet is wrong. That would show an about me page, uh, which means that we're coming to an end. So anytime you want to know something uh, about me, then you can read, uh, that I will cover that one too. Uh, so if you want to read a little bit uh, about my presentations that I've run on different conference, there, are, there is a list on the about me page. Uh, every week I get an information from that them that zero people have visited this page, so <laughs> hopefully that will change. And there is a recommended reading, so uh, you can take a photo of that. Uh, that is the the most important uh, things to that I base this uh, talk on. So packaging Python org, which has a lot of uh, interesting stuff, mostly current. Uh, it's some information about wheels versus eggs. Uh, to tutorials on how to start. They might not be that actual right now while we're moving to the test by Pi. And of course, Python packaging authorities uh, .io. Uh, so what's going on to, to be changed in the nearest future, future. And that's it. So are there any questions? I will see, but there was someone first. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. And right now, if we need some private package, we just add it on our private GitHub, and then in requirements.txt, we just link to the repo. And 
what's the advantages of using DevPy or this second tool, I don't remember the name, over this approach, just using separate uh, URL with even version? Uh, I would say that uh, the DevPy is, uh, here was the next question. Uh, DevPy is a good way to keep your packages. They are versioned there, so you can, uh, in the situation where we have a lot of packages, uh, as consider one package is one service, and this, these services talk to each other, and they might have pin dependencies to some versions of the package, uh, it's a great way to, that we can just bump the version of one of our services in the setup.py and that will gather this from the devpy and bump the version. Uh, so we have more flexibility on what we use. Uh, if we would hold that, hold that data in, in some, on some server or on some, some directory, then I guess that we would need to make more actions to, to for example, bump a, a package version. Okay. Um, are there any thoughts uh, moving up to the next level? Um, zooming out from, from a single package and managing lots of packages, which are usually uh, used to define your project. So going back from uh, uh, just handling a single package, stepping up to project management. Is not there anything? Tr not really, because uh, I can't find any reason why you want to bulk update your packages because um, that's because you are modifying um, a, an application consisting of maybe 20 or 50 packages and uh, so you want to upload a whole bunch of packages um, sh push them into a production environment or whatever mm -hmm. okay I, I guess that I might find some reasons why you want to do that but I would go for a single package uh, uh, approach more because you have more information and more control on your package when you're just just uh, editing one of them uh, for example if you yeah again if there are some services uh, and different services use one of your packages uh, then you might want a separate approach for that package only and okay. uh, thank you Uh, you mentioned DevPy, which kind of mirrors the PyPy packaging ar um, ar archive. I used a product years ago called Python Egg Basket, which is just a purely local repository for you know, your packages when you were in developing and whatever, you just had a copy of it locally. Are you aware of anything like that? That is purely local that runs on your machine. Uh, I know there's been some attempts uh, before I joined the, the company uh, on using different uh, package hosting uh, services. Uh, but the reason we use DevPy might be that one of the Python packaging authorities guys works in the company and he was uh, helping in development the setup tools and the DevPy. Uh, so I guess that was the, why we chose uh, DevPy and it's working well. So this is the area that no one really wants to touch. And as long as it's working fine, I guess that uh, that there won't be an approach to move to, to a different end. And I can recommend DevPy because it's pretty stable and, and reliable. Uh, but if you know that there are other tools, well, I recommend that everybody reads a little bit about those tools and choose which, which fits the best for, for the purpose. Okay, I guess that's all. So, thanks a lot.